The months of Elul and Tishrei are known for their sounds. The resonance of the shofar, the stirring melodies, and of course, the affecting words of our liturgy. Some parts of that liturgy are so compelling, in fact, that they've taken on a life of their own. Slichot, for example, are a collection of prayers originally composed for Yom Kippur, but they've become a prominent feature of these months as a whole. In many communities, slichot are recited on a daily basis, beginning either the week before Rosh Hashanah or even from the very beginning of Elul. The slichot liturgy focuses on familiar themes, reflection, accountability, repentance, and the service itself invites communal participation through call and response poems and repeated refrains of the Shlosha Sremidot, the 13 attributes of mercy, those iconic verses which list God's characteristics of compassion and grace. So it's clear that slichot were designed to be said together in community. But that goes beyond just a question of aesthetics, and it actually becomes a question of halacha, Jewish law. Halachic authorities ask, should we even be allowed to recite slichot alone? It all comes down to that core text, the 13 attributes. Some authorities claim that these lines should only ever be recited when praying in a minion, in a community. Others are baffled by the suggestion. These are just verses from the Torah. Why shouldn't we recite them whenever and wherever we feel so moved? We find one explanation from the Rashba, Rav Shlomo Ibn Idaret. He concedes that, yes, typically, these lines are just Torah verses. However, when they're recited in this context, they're transformed into something else. As the Rashba explains it, when the 13 attributes are said, derech tefillah uvakashat rachamim, in the form of prayer and as a plea for compassion, they're suddenly elevated from a simple quote to what we call a davar shabik dusha, a sacred expression. And we define a davar shabik dusha as a piece of prayer that is so significant that it requires a minion in order to be said. During this time of year, we often speak about the transformative power of prayer. And when we say that, we usually mean the power of prayer to transform us. Here, we find evidence of a different kind of transformation. We as individuals have the ability to transform our words and ideas by expressing them in the form of prayer. Tefillah is not just a collection of words, but a mode and an attitude that we can step into. And when we do that, our words don't just take on greater significance, but they also become a site of connection and community. My blessing for us this year is that tefillah brings us together, not only because of its beautiful melodies and compelling liturgy, but because we make it so by stepping fully into that derech tefillah, that mode of prayer, and by inviting others to come on that journey with us. Shana Tova.